What up guys, Miguel here of Vigitech, and today we'll be looking at some of the most popular Android UIs available in the market. Obviously, this topic is highly subjective on each person's taste and preferences. Then there's the fact that most Android phones will somewhat feel very familiar since they all do run Android. With that being said, let's get into it. Starting off with one of the most popular smartphone companies out there with Xiaomi and MIUI. And for good reason as MIUI offers a range of customization options, built-in apps, and is rather feature-rich in design while remaining simple to use. But all those rich features come at a cost, cause one thing to note is that MIUI does run on all Xiaomi, Redmi, and Poco phones, and recently MIUI 13 has been excellent and smooth in use for most users. Apart from a few bug reports due to how resource-heavy it can be with all its features, and not to mention it does come with some ads and bloatware. What's great is that Xiaomi is known to provide regular updates to MIUI, helping it stay up to date and secure. Another small thing to note is that some users report its way of handling notifications being quite confusing to use. But take that with a grain of salt because it can depend on the user. Now on to one of the, if not most popular Android UIs out there, Samsung's One UI. Being as popular as Samsung, One UI became synonymous and familiar to what people have come to expect of an Android phone. And with One UI, you get all the bells and whistles with a clean and intuitive user experience, designed for one-handed use. The interface itself prioritizes ease of use with features like enhanced home screen layouts, intuitive navigation, while also delivering their own unique and modern design, as well as versatile multitasking and productivity features. It's also worth mentioning that One UI is known not to be the most resource-friendly Android UIs out there since it does have a ton of features. In fact, most users might never know all the features available on One UI, and going through it all can be a video in of itself, which in turn can pose a learning curve for most users freshly switching to it. Then again, that can be said for any user interface. One notable feature is Samsung DeX, which lets you hook up your Samsung phone to a fully-fledged PC, a monitor, a TV, and any other display output device, effectively converting your smartphone to a productivity desktop replacement. Next, we got Oxygen OS by OnePlus and Color OS by Oppo. And you may be wondering why we put them together. And that's essentially because they're pretty much the same. Oxygen OS praised for its speed and performance, while Color OS for its wide range of features. The best thing about Oxygen and Color OS is just how simple and user friendly it is. It offers a quick user experience with smooth animations and a good amount of customization. Although it may not be as robust or have as many advanced features compared to other UIs, it makes up for it by having a clean, simple-to-use interface. It does have some features to offer such as a nice reading mode, gaming mode, and zen mode. And not to mention that the lack of ads is truly a treat for those who hate having to deal with them. But if I had to pick one over the other, Oxygen OS seems like a much better choice with its UI's design being a bit more clean and attractive since ColorOS seems to be a tad bit more vibrant and colorful, but that's just my taste. Then there's the new kid on the block, Nothing OS by Nothing, which is still in its infancy with them just releasing only one device so far, the Nothing phone. What makes it truly unique is that Nothing is trying to be aesthetically different, and with Nothing OS, you somewhat get a breath of fresh air in a sea of Android smartphones with their own unique and simple design choices. You can appreciate their distinctive retro analog design DNA on widgets, certain apps like the voice recorder and weather app, as well as its glyph interface and even notification sounds and alarms. And although it's not as feature-packed as other Android user interfaces, it's doing something different by keeping its UI as stock as they can which translates to Nothing OS being fairly lightweight and optimized for its mid-tier chipset, resulting in a snappy and smooth user interface. For the layman, that means Nothing didn't install a bunch of bloatware into their OS, which is always a plus. Next up is Huawei's EMUI or Emotion UI. If you got a Huawei smartphone without doing much research, 
The biggest downside is that you're pretty much locked into Huawei's suite of apps since it lacks Google's Play Store services. That means no native support for Gmail, Google Maps, and the Google Play Store, and everything else that goes along with those apps, which means you're going to have to depend on Huawei's app gallery, which can be a downside since you won't necessarily get the latest updates on certain apps. It does feature themes for customization, but it's rather limited. One great thing about EMUI is that just like the Apple ecosystem, Huawei has pretty much nailed it when syncing the user experience across all its laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Vivo smartphones run commonly on FunTouch OS, and overall, it gets the job done. One thing to note is that people do find it a bit jittery at times, and in our opinion, one of the main reasons for this is a lack in optimization for stuff like animations not being as fluent as other Android user interfaces. In general, around the office, FunTouch OS is the interface most of us needed the most time to get used to. It's also known not to be as feature-rich as other UIs, and its customization is rather limited. But the UI does support Ultra Game Mode for enhanced graphics, an easy mode for those who want to simplify their interface, and an app clone function if you want to run multiple instances of the same app with multiple accounts. Alam na mga DOM jan. And last but not the least on this list, is Realme UI by, well, Realme. Realme UI does offer a clean and simple design that features a good amount of customization and features like smart sidebar and dual mode audio to name a few. The UI isn't really known to be the best out there since it does lack some advanced features and does display ads occasionally and comes with bloatware. It doesn't tend to be the best choice for power users, but it's definitely not bad. Sometimes you can even confuse Realme UI with ColorOS, maybe due to the time Realme was a lot closer to Oppo. So, which UI is the best? Well, like I said at the start, it's really up to you and your personal taste. But if we had to choose the best from this list, then I'll have to go with Samsung's One UI, especially with most Android phones feeling quite saturated and very similar to one another. One UI still offers a unique experience while offering a familiar and clean interface, but at the same time being the most feature-filled with a variety of customization to suit any user's taste. But like we said, it can be quite resource-intensive, so it's best enjoyed on their flagship Galaxy S series devices since it is best optimized for them. But which one is your favorite, and what's your favorite feature from your favorite user interface? Let us know in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you get notified of our future uploads. Be sure to visit nubitech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.